beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. By the grace of God, we have been on Jesus' um, prescribed way of prayer. Amen. Amen. And uh, we've been learning by the Lord, and we have been getting some, you know, broader understanding of prayer. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And um, learning to pray the Jesus way. And call scripture in Mark Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 13. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, that they have that they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in the secret, and thy father which saith in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the hidden do, for they think that they shall be heard, for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things he have made of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have joined it quite a lot. Um, we've looked at the hypocrite prayers. We've looked at um, um, the, um, the reward for hypocrite prayers. We've looked at um, praying in our closet. Amen to Jesus. We've looked at pray, uh, not praying the hidden prayer that is talking so much. Amen to Jesus. I pray. And we began to look at... Um, 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 our Father, who knows what we need, Amen to Jesus, Amen, Hallelujah to Jesus. And then, basically, um, we have still been on our Father, who knows what we need, Amen to Jesus. Amen. All right, um, we will we'll be in this. We're going to be going into the prayer precisely that Jesus told the disciples to pray, Amen to Jesus. It was actually a structure of. Of prayer is a, a systematic way that prayer was meant to follow amen to jesus all right because if you look at the prayer then of the judaism amen to jesus that they, they never prayed in this manner are you get what i'm saying never prayed in this manner this words he gave to his they never prayed in this manner so as it were it was not a judaist prayer um amen to jesus for those who um say it was an old testament prayer it was not a judaist prayer because you want to look at the old testament the old testament really bordered on the judaist practice praise god forevermore uh young people we looked at the seven feast now um, what, what teaching was that we did look at the seven feast amen to jesus so that, that was the judaist practice this prayer was not actually a judaist practice amen to jesus when a judaist prayer they, they 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 have the way they pray praise god forevermore but this prayer was since I'm not a Jewish prayer, and um um that it, it, it is not an old testament prayer, praise God forevermore, because the New Testament it, it the New Testament began with the death and resurrection of the resurrection of Jesus. It was not a new testament, it was not an old testament prayer, and uh, uh many say it was not an a new um uh, an old testament prayer. No, no, it was not an old testament prayer, many say it was not a new testament prayer. So basically we should understand that it is a structure for prayer. Praise God forevermore. Uh, I will call it a mid testament prayer. Actually, I I, I always stand on the, on the on the opinion that Jesus was in the mid testament. What transpired between um, let's look at John the Baptist, the last prophet, amen to Jesus, and um, the death of Jesus was actually a mid testament. It was a transition point between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So for me, I call it a mid, the Mid Testament. Um, I, everybody has their um, standpoints as regards scriptures. Praise God forevermore. Now, so this kind of prayer was, I would say, it was a transition prayer from the Old Testament to the what New Testament. 
So as it were, it was a laid down pattern for the New Testament Christian to follow in prayers. Are we together? Hallelujah to Jesus. So it's still very useful to us and very helpful for us. And we've been looking at uh, quite a lot. Amen to Jesus. Um, we've looked at quite a lot. And we started looking at um, our Heavenly Father who, ha- who knows what we need. Amen to Jesus. And we understood that um, he, he, our Father, which is our Abba, is in heaven, which is a place of no lack, no want, no scarcity and overflowing supply. And that consciousness and understanding builds faith in us while we are praying. Praise God forevermore. And because if there's no faith in prayer, it's actually not prayer. Amen to Jesus. Now, prayer better than driven by faith, we concentrate more on praising and worshipping God. That's what, how you know a prayer that is better by faith. Are we together? That's how you know a faith-driven prayer, a faith-better prayer. Um, over the years, we've been able to, the church has spent so much time um, shouting, hitting our head on the wall and doing many things. We are not, I'm not see. I don't um, criticize people, praise God forevermore. Because every one of us, we've been through our different phases and our different stages, praise God forevermore. And I want we need to understand is that everything that God takes allows us to go through is for us to be able to know His love for us. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. As you go on, you begin to see that everything you go through is for Him for you to know His love for you. Um, you think that you are the best now or you are the peak now until God uh, until God allows you to see how messed up that face you are is. Are you get what I'm saying? And then He blesses you for you to go to the next phase. God always has a better place for us. Amen. And so, if we see his love in the right perspective, we'll discover that what was even making us hit our head, cry, they were actually for our good. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. For our good. So, it gives us the understanding of always seeing the love of God in the place of prayer. And um, the love of God is what bets faith. And so, when you have, when faith is better than your heart, you would just very well understand that you should rather invest more time in praising God and worshipping God than in talking like a hidden, I get what I'm saying, or in crying and whining and complaining. Um, you know, I remember something and I was like, God, thank you. Um, you know, um, I, did a, I, I did a business deal with somebody. Everything was signed and every of that. And the person could not even fulfill the terms of the contract. And he started telling me he was helping me. I invested. After investing, you are to fulfill your term of the contract. You brought the business idea. And he started telling me you are helping me. And I was like, wow, what a crazy world. And at the end of the day, anyway, we t- I thank God that at the end of the day, God has always, always given us the what? The upper hand. And another person, you know, similar thing. And I remembered when Abraham came from war and the the king wanted to give him goods and he said, no, I'm not going to take a list from you. He said, Let you, lest you say you made Abraham what? Rich. And I was like, that's what just God did in that whole period. Lest some heathens, we say they made me what? Rich. Whereas I was the one who actually what? Helped them. Because the ideology of life, you don't know how life would turn. Life, you... you especially in the media, things are turned the other way around. And they make you see what they want you to see. By the time you have finished seeing what they want you to see, when you realize what you are actually meant to see, it may be too late. That's what we see in, that's what we see in the world today. And by the time people go and publicize you and publish and say things about you, especially in this environment where we live, where what rules is uh, propaganda. Propaganda is other today here. Yeah. And they begin to say things about you. Like, and then by the time you wake up and realize that, when people start trying to wake up to realize that they were telling lies, they have already done a lot of damages. And like, God did it so that eh, nobody will say he made me rich. Are we together? At, at the end, actually, they are now at my mercy. Praise God forevermore. So sometimes, you may not understand. And you may begin to cry and pray and every of that. As human beings, we cry and pray. But we don't see the love of God in everything that happens to us. While we walk with the Lord, I think the basic thing that Christians should see every day is the love of God. See, you are born again. I am born again. We are no longer in the camp of the devil. The Bible has translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. If we have been translated, that means we are being translated. While you were in the kingdom of darkness, you were a chicken in the poultry of the devil. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? He can kill you anytime he wants. But now that you are in the kingdom of Christ Jesus, the devil cannot do anything to you. Are we together? So, you should stop thinking of the devil when things happen. One of the things that um, Christians has messed up our mind over the years is that we have become so devil conscious and Christ unconscious. I remember a young man was in our ministry then and he went to me wanted to go for a, a night vigil. For me, I don't have issues with many things. I told him, go. Went for night. When he came up, night, I told him, let me ask you one question. I told him, 70% of your prayers in that night vigil was binding and casting the devil and fighting demons. And he said, yes. And I said, so let me ask you a question. Who did you go to worship in that night which you went for? He was looking at me. Because the person was, was very, very practical and real. You know, when you are practical, uh, they tell you you are too critical, you are too, what other that, what are that want to do is again. Uh -huh. But let's face the fact, if I spent 70% of my prayer time, of my pr prayer time, Binding and casting devil. Who was I praying to? The devil was able to get my attention. That was all. And and Jesus did not get my attention. And you get what I'm saying? And, it, and over the years, we've been able to to pump the minds of Christians with the devil so much that we become so devil conscious and Jesus unconscious. So we think that the devil is the one doing everything and running every show. So any problem that comes up, the first thing we shout is the devil. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes. We do not we do not see the love of God, and we bring this devil consciousness <coughs> to the place of prayer, and that devil consciousness it extracts the love of God from us. Mm. And I mean, extra, how, how, which other word can I use to explain this level of extraction? It extracts, it drains, you know, it totally removes our understanding of God's love, mm -hmm. our um, consciousness of God's love, you know, when some people are trying to ex um, extract something from a nylon, they would they would squeeze the nylon to ensure that everything goes out, even release it with water to ensure everything goes out. And that's what the devil wants to do to our consciousness of the love of God. He wants to extract it and rinse it with fear, mm. so that there will be no, we will not have any consciousness of the love of God. So what we just think of is the devil at work. And when we do, when he when he can succeed in doing that, we will become more devil conscious than God's love conscious. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, if you take that kind of mentality into prayer, you will never get results. Why? Because it is not driven by faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even when you are about to die, it's like everything is going wrong. Just still see the love of God. I know it's, it's, it sounds very impracticable. Is that not so? But we need to learn to see the love of God. I was, I, I, I was watching a, 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 a cartoon movie of, you know, it was actually what happened to Christians in a communist nation like that. And there was a woman who... There were two Christians. One was a younger Christian, the other was an older Christian. They were both um, women. And the younger one saw so, so the way they were, were hitting, they were beating the, the, the older one. She got angry. She wanted to even hit the soldier. And the other one said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Forgive, forgive. So they took them to another. She was angry. He said, well, he said no, forgive, forgive. They took them to, a, they now relocated them to another location. When they got there, as the younger one lay down on the beds that were available, that were made with um, grass, dry grass kind of, lice entered into her body and she started shouting, lice. She, said, she was not happy. And the other one said, thank you, Lord, for the privilege to get a place to lay our head. I just looked at her and I'm like, wow. The older Christian, she kept on seeing the love that God has for her in every situation. And this one thing that over the years in church, we have not been able to educate Christians well enough. We have educated them to see the devil at work. We have educated them to always bind and cast. I don't, and sometimes I used to I always tell um um, pastor, I always tell my wife, and she always tells me, I don't, she said, I don't see the devil here. We don't see the devil at all. I can't see the devil. Because I left, I left his kingdom many, many years ago. So I don't see any reason why I should be frolicking with him and exalting him. And in the church today, any small thing, we exalt the devil. We exalt the devil. We exalt the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we no longer see the love of God. Even when God allows trials and tribulations come to us, we see the devil as the one behind it. God allows it 
He's not the one behind. He's not the one doing it, but he allows it. But we see the devil as the one pressing us and every of that. So this lack of consciousness of God's love has destroyed our prayer life a lot. And so we don't pray in faith. We pray in fear. We pray in doubt. We pray in unbelief. And it has messed us up a lot. Praise God forevermore. So when we are conscious of God's um, love, when we are conscious of God's love, prayer, um, faith gives birth to our prayer. And because and our prayer will be concentrated on praising and worshipping God. And afterwards, we can make requests and also then conclude with what? We start off with praise and worship. We request and we conclude with what? Praise and worship and thanksgiving. That's just how it's meant to go because is you are just enveloped in the love of God. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And then Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be thankful for be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer number one and supplication number two we thanks giving let your request be made known unto god so if thanksgiving does not end the process you have not successfully prayed and you get what i'm saying you start it with praise and worship you end it with praise and worship and thanksgiving are you get what i'm saying you just that's the reason why you will not be a hidden a hidden in prayer you will not make vain repetition. You will not talk so much. Why? Because the thing you want to say, if you are going to pray for five hours, the thing you want to say to request from God may just be ten minutes, five minutes. If there are many things you have to say, maybe if you talk, you have many, maybe five thousand prayer points. You can you can say them one after the other for maybe one hour. But the remaining time should be concluded, consumed with what praising worshiping and thanking god why because you have the understanding that he loves you and that bears the faith that i've come to talk to my abba who loves me and he's very interested in me praise god forevermore mm -hmm. now so with this we understand that that which transmits um uh, what transmits to you when you focus on praise and worship is the goodness and the mercy of god amen to jesus mm -hmm. now so when you focus on praise and worship what comes to your way is just a manifestation of God's goodness and his mercy. Now, you begin to see it even in the place of praise and worship. The place of praise, before you start seeing, in quote, physical manifestations. And the fact is that the truth is that no matter what you say, you are still seeing his goodness and mercy. Even with this seemingly terrible situation you think you are in. The, the, the lady saw something to thank God for. The old lady saw something. The other lady saw something to thank God for. And what was that? Before, they were not having a place to lie down. No, they have a place to lie down. So we should be thankful to God. I get what I'm saying. In every situation we stand, we still see the goodness and mercy of God. And we must see, concentrate on praising and worshipping. It will praising and worshipping God. It will, it will make us see clearly his goodness and mercy. You see, when I always use the story of Haggai, why Haggai cried, the tears on her eyes prevented her from seeing the way by her side. When the angel came and spoke with her, she opened her eyes and she saw well by her side. Question was, did, did the word just natural, just supernaturally appear there? Did the angel just dig well suddenly? No, the angel didn't dig well suddenly. Are you get what I'm saying? The angel, the word did not appear supernaturally. It was not a miracle appearance of well. No, the well was there all the while. But because she, she, her eyes were clouded, were covered with tears, she couldn't see that the solution was close by. Now, when we focus on the love of God, it keeps our eyes clear to see what God's goodness and his word mm. and his mercy. And so I was like, God, so this is what you're trying to do. That the hidden will not say made me rich. Rather, I made him rich. I get what I'm saying. Rather, I helped him in every implication. So we must learn to see the goodness and the mercies of God. But that comes in the place of what? Praise, worship, and thanksgiving. In the consciousness of the love of our Abba for us, we would always see the goodness and the mercies of God. You know the song that says, I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You see, that song is a revelation. I get what I'm saying. It's a revelation. And it comes by, by reason of what? The consciousness of the love of God. It's the love of God that will be allowing all the things that have been happening to you happen to you. Get what I'm saying? As you go on, you understand what His love was doing for you. When the Lord made you understand, ah, this I, I allow this so that 
like Abraham, you can see that this one did not make me rich. And I was like, wow. Let it never be said that he didn't make me rich. Whereas, I was one who actually blessed them. And I, then they now turned it around and said they made me rich. And I was like, thank you, Lord, for that. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. So, worship God and his name in prayers. Worship God and his name in what? Prayers. Praying for God's rule and reign on earth. That's his will to be done on earth. It's an act of worshiping God. They see Jesus said them, said, say that will be done on earth. You see, we've looked at end time, uh, says, our Father who art in heaven, and no be thy name. That's the place of worship. Are we together? Adoring God, worshiping God, praise God forevermore. So we begin with adoring God, worshiping God. The psalmist said it. And time to escape the task given into his court with praise. So we adore our Father who art in heaven. We hallow his name. Are we together? That, so what we do now is to worship him and his name. Worship him and his name. Hallow be thy name. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Hallow be thy name. Um, um, Psalm 66 verse 4 says, All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. You see, David was a man who understood this procedure of this um, protocol of prayer. Are you get what I'm saying? This protocol of you understood it. This protocol of prayer. I say seven times a day will I praise you for that what for that uh, for that loving kindness with me. And he said, I, I, I'll pray. I'll praise you at midnight for your righteous judgment to me. David understood the protocol of prayer, and this protocol is what Jesus was just trying to make them understand us. Are you get what I'm saying? He was a, an Old Testament um, person who lived with the New Testament understanding. You see, most of the time, I see Christians that we see, we, we, a lot of us that say we are new creation. Some of the time, we have more, more understanding problem than even the old creations. We don't have time to pray. Hey, 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 we shout, we clap, we dance, we hit our head on the wall, we break our body. And I believe when we do those kind of things, David will be looking for everything and say, Lord, what's happening here? What's happening here? Who, is, who told them how to pray this way? And I'm like, God will say, man, this is what I've been coping with. <laughs> this, is, this is what I've been coping with. Bible says, uh, and, uh, what do you call it? It says, so great a cloud of witnesses. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, do, do that David and the rest. So, they're like, ah, Father, what's happening here? So, Father said, man, this is what I've been coping with. He says, so how do you cope with it? He said, when they hit their head so long, I just have to, in my mercy, just give them this thing they're looking for. But these people don't want to learn how to pray. They don't want to learn. And he said, no, no, but, but father, you see, you have to enter into, we enter into your court. I say, yes, I know, but these people don't want to know. So I, based on my mercy, just be, before they hit their head on the wall and die, I just give them the thing they are looking for. But how I wish they can learn how to pray so that they don't need to hit their head on the wall and shout and jump and clap for hours before they see what they're looking for. Are we together? Yeah. So, this is what David understood. They understood. He said, All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. Are we together? They shall sing to thy name. Jesus said, Hallowed be thy name. They shall sing to thy name. So, we don't only praise God, we also praise his name. Are you getting what I'm saying? We praise his name. That's it, brings us to the truth. That we don't just call him Abba, we also call him Yahweh. Because his name, when, when Moses said, Who do I say sent me? Who do I tell them send me? He said, What? I am. I am. I am that I am sent thee. Which is what? Yahweh, the self existent one. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we praise what? His name. So we can lift our praises to Yahweh. So when we hear songs like, You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Such songs are what? Are sweet to the Father. Because we are praising His name. Are you get what I'm saying? Adonai. Adonai. We are praising His name. Jehovah Jireh. We are praising His Are you get what I'm saying? Songs that call His name. And that is based on our revelation of his name to us. He's, it sweets to him. Are you getting me? He's our Abba Father. He's our Abba Father. And then we call him the names, his name that, that, that we have a revelation of. 
He's excited by that. I hear what I'm saying. He's excited by that. And we must do that. Are we together? We have to do that in worship. We have to do that in prayers. Praise his name. Are we together? Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise God forevermore. That is a very important aspect of prayer. Very important aspect of prayer. And most, more often than not, we see that Christians don't praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We pray, but we don't praise his name very often. But we have to ensure that we praise his name very often. It's not negotiable. You can't, you can't remove that from, from the act of prayer. Praise the Lord forevermore. So, call him by the, by, as you call him Abba Father, call him, praise the name you have of, his name that gives you a sweet revelation. Are you get what I'm saying? Especially maybe when you are in serious situations, you need Jehovah, you need him to provide for you. You praise his name as your Jehovah China. When you need healing for your body, you praise his name as your Jehovah Rapha. Are we together? When you need to fight a battle for you, you praise his name as your Jehovah Nisi. Come, are we together? Just pray. Uh, Pastor did a teaching on the names of God. He said, go and listen to that teaching. We're so blessed with that teaching. We began to we, got, we began to praise God with new understanding, uh, new revelation. Praise the name of the Lord with the name that gives revelation to you. And also the name that is particular to that your present situation. Praise his name in that light. Praise his name. Above all, you praise him as your father. We talked about that yesterday. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. And then, you know, it says, Our Father, what heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen to Jesus. All right. So now, um, thy kingdom come. We're going to be looking at that. But let's quickly look at that we be done on earth. But we're still going to look at this more. I'm just trying to scratch them a little and then we'll go into them. Say, I'm um, praying for the for the for the rule and reign of God on earth is that his will to be done on earth is an act of worship to God. Says thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God come means the rule and reign of God comes on earth. Are you get what I'm saying? The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God. Are you get what I'm saying? And the rule and reign of God actually is the will of God done on earth. Are you get what I'm saying? You see, um, for us to be able to bind on earth so it can be bound in heaven. And to lose on earth, so you can lose in heaven. We must have been able to pray down his will here. Because without his will done here, what we enforce here cannot be enforced in heaven. We need to understand that. God made man and made him to be, to, he created man, put him in the garden of Eden and told him to what? To make the earth a colony of heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? So man was a colonist of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? He made him to, he created man to be, and, made, uh, and put man in, to make a colony of heaven. Why God being the supreme leader and heaven being the 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 um, um the, the supreme the the the, 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 the governing place? Are you get what I'm saying? Man was also to make a colony, and it was the colonies of God. So in other words, what is to be to happen in heaven was to happen on earth. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So for you, because some of the people just say, whatever you bind on earth is bind in heaven. We need to understand this balance. We need to understand it well. You cannot bind on earth what the will of God has not established on earth. You cannot bind on earth what the kingdom of God has not bound. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? If the kingdom of God is not binding it, are you getting me? Mm. Don't waste your time binding it. So you need to know what the will of God is concerning things on the earth for you to be effectively bind on there before it will bind in heaven. And I say, I say, well, somebody bind there, bind there. You see, bind, bind. Actually, if you bind, bind, it look like the things they are binding are not binding. So they start getting frustrated in prayer. No, that's where the frustration is coming. You must allow scriptures to explain scriptures. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just like, for example, the devil, you cannot bind him now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because his time has not come to be what? Bound for a thousand years. Are you getting me? So binding him, binding the devil, binding the devil, binding the devil. Actually, the devil is not even the one doing many of the uh, things we are seeing here. He has demon spirits doing them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So bind the devil, bind the devil, bind the devil. That's not your job to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can bind the demon spirits, fine. But the truth is that after you bind them and cast them out, if the person you cast them out is not clean, they, they're losing their self and come back. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why all these deliverance ministries bind and cast um, uh, things 
you will come to realize that the best thing you need to do is to have yourself full of the word of God. When you are full of the word of God and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, a devil cannot have any place to come and or demons cannot have any place to come and have their field day. I you get what I'm saying. But if you want to commit the band and cast things, you're gonna have a difficult time binding and casting. I you get what I'm saying. All right. And then the devil you cannot bind him. So if you are trying to bind the devil on earth so that will be bound in heaven, my brother, my sister, that is a very waste of time prayer are you get what i'm saying because you must understand the will of god for you to be able to what enforce it from earth if you don't understand it you cannot enforce it so if you enforce something outside the will it will not work are we together yes so thy kingdom has to thy kingdom come so the rule and reign of God has to be a major focus of prayer. When the rule and reign of God is a major focus of prayer, then we understand the will of God and then we can enforce what the will has already enforced. Actually, we are not enforcing something new. We are talking about as authority in Christ. That's why some Christians say they are praying in this I know what because you don't understand the confines of your authority. Are you get what I'm saying? A military man cannot go a a a a a a a a a, a military man cannot go and fight in the sea. He's a land troop, is that also? He's a land troop. The sea is for the naval. The naval officer, is that also? For the navy. Sea is for navy. They are all military, is that also? They are all forces. They are all forces of um, war warfare for the nation. But those for the sea are called navy. Those for the land are called what? Soldiers. Are you getting what I'm saying? There, there are soldiers that also fight in the air. They are called what? Air Force. So if soldier goes to the sea to fight, he may die. He will not be able to carry out his what? His, his fighting duty he went to do. But he's still, a, he's still, a, he's still a, a, a weapon of what? Of warfare for the nation. But his area of jurisdiction differs. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we need to understand how these things operate. What the will of the kingdom of God has not enforced. What the will, kingdom of God has not enforced yet. You cannot enforce it. If not, you'll be a soldier trying to fight in what? In the water. And you'll be complaining, why, why am I unable to fight? Even the uniforms if are safe. Are you getting what I'm saying? And this is where a lot of Christians have a lot of problems. And they are complaining and complaining. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so when you pray for the will of God to be done on earth, you will be sure, you sure will be the first partaker and your life will reflect the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you stay, with the prayer of the will of God, we don't pray it a lot, but it's a very good prayer to pray. When you keep praying for the will of God, you'll be the first partaker, are you getting what I'm saying? And your life will, be the, will reflect the will of God. Now, it's impossible for you to pray for God's rule and reign and your life will not experience it first. It's impossible. So when you pray for the rule and reign of God, when you pray for the kingdom of the, the kingdom of God to be established on the earth, and you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the, the Bible says that the night of, of the glory of the Lord shall cover the air like waters cover the sea. We don't see such prayers in the church. We see many personalized prayers, but we don't see these prayers in the church. But they are very important because when we pray them, our life will reflect it. Yeah. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, this is so because praying the will of God is labor in worship. Praying the will of God is labor in worship. 2 Timothy 2 verse 6 says, The husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. So when you labor in worship, you'll be the first partaker. That's why the devil does not want us to pray the will of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Spend hours, spend time just praying the will of God for the nations of the earth. Praying it for your family. Are you getting what I'm saying? You'll be the first partaker. Because let me tell you something. I don't know. Sometimes I, when I look at the way Christians respond to, 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 to their nations, it pains my heart. Because you don't know one thing. Hey, for we, are, we are the righteous. We are the, we are the call that we are the, we, the, the uh, we are the set apart. I agree. I agree. And the Lord will protect us. I agree. I do agree. But my brothers, my sisters, the early church, they were the righteous don't forget when persecution hits them christians stayed in one alley like that in a building in thousands i don't know whether they were climbing on themselves or how they squeezed themselves in there until the their persecutors located them and annihilated all of them 
I get what I'm saying. We are not praying for such kind. But please, let's pray for the will of God for our nations. Let's pray for the will of God for our cities, for our communities. I get what I'm saying. Because we know we are the righteous, we are the called out, but we have assignment to do. Uh -huh. So that we will not be cut short. I get what I'm saying. Because if your nation is at stake, if your nation is under persecution, you are under persecution. You'll be hiding uh, in caves, living in um, underground buildings. How, how, can you, how can you survive well there? Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright, so um, praying the will of God is labor in worship. So it's an aspect of worship. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a labor in worship, and we have to labor that labor in worship. Alright. Praying the will of God does not rule out our planning. Are we together? God allows us to have many plans. So we are to have many plans, but we must remain open to the counsel of God and let it stand because it's his counsel that we stand. Whether you let it stand, or oh yes, it is his counsel that we stand. All you do is you may you have you have developed some fractures and some some um some um, um scars before you finally allow his counsel to what stand. That's why earlier you open up your mind, your heart to his counsel is better for you. Have many plans. Pray with many plans in your heart. Ask many requests, but just open your heart to receiving. What he gives to you is what you need, and that's what you should receive. Open your heart to his counsel, because it's his counsel that will be given to you. You ask for 50 things, his counsel that will be given to you. Accept his counsel. If you struggle with his counsel, you have a lot of um, a lot of scars in your life that you should have present, prevent, prevented. You have, you have a lot of uh, fractures and what else again? Injuries that you should have prevented. The best way to prevent a lot of injuries in life is just to plan but allow the counsel of the Lord what? Stand. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Open your heart to his counsel. Be flexible to the Lord. The Bible says, Delight thyself in the Lord. I saw that. I read that scripture again and it was wow with my heart. Delight thyself in the Lord and you shall grant thee the desires of thy heart. You know, the word delight there means to be flexible to the Lord. It also means to be luxurious. Are you getting what I'm saying? But that was allow allow for, for God's uh, give it, give it, give room. Give so much room for God to do his own. Don't be rigid when you are praying. You know, some of the times when we pray, we are so rigid. God, give me this thing, or this thing, or this thing. So our mind is fixed that this must be it. But whereas that is not actually what God wants. Are you getting what I'm saying? Our humanity is a limitation. We must not allow the limitation of our humanity deprive us from God's supernatural, sweet counsel. Because his counsel is sweet for us. Are we together? So we open our hearts, we open our minds, and we allow his supernatural, sweet counsel do what? Take its final stand. At the end. So that's why you should not say, ah, and I prayed for this, I prayed for this, I prayed for this, and they see it at the end of the day, see what an answer. You know, um, um, you know, um, a, a man of God told me, I said, ah, that, this, he told me, I've forgotten the country, that country, I prayed, I prayed for God to take me to, to that country. But it didn't happen. And, you know, it's all good. You may pray for one country, and God does not open that country for you. You may go and open another country that you don't even like. A country that if they dash you, you not even take. What will you do? You have to accept this counsel because it's counsel that is most fitting for you. I actually never planned to leave outside my country. I planned that, okay, I'll travel out, preach, and come back. I never planned. So when the first door for uh, going out of my country opened, okay, now the next door for, and I've been out of my country since 2014. You know, it was not my will. I just have to accept the will of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so when people think that we're outside, they think we're just enjoying the outside things. But it's not like we're enjoying the outside things. So, Amen. We are just still in the center of God's will, and God is doing what God alone can do. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. This further addresses the fact that our joy is to be full by asking and receiving, not receiving only. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Over the time, over the years, we have paid fullness of joy to receiving only so after you have prayed when you receive that's when your joy is full so if you don't receive no joy no, this is as i see a lot of frustrated christians a lot of frustrated christians frustrated because they believe that the proof 
that you have joy is that you have received what you have asked for. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you see, the conjunction and is used to show that two things go together. They are inseparable. And if they are inseparable, they must, be, they must go together. You cannot separate them. The basis of fullness of joy is asking and receiving, not receiving only. Over the years, we have used receiving only as a basis of what? Fullness of joy. So it means that if you have not gotten fullness of joy when you started acting, if you have not even got to have joy when you started, you see, that's how it was connected on the love of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's the love of God that floods our heart, that fills us with joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you have not had joy before you start acting, make sure you have the joy before you start acting. Are you getting what I'm saying? Start having joy before you start acting. Praise God forevermore. Don't wait till you see before you start having joy. If not, you may never have joy. Are we together? We are to ask, till, and receive that our joy may be full. Not receive to make our joy full. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. We are to ask and receive, but not receive only. The chocolate of receive, 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 ask and receive to your joy. So it's until you receive before your joy is full. That's why I say a lot of joyless Christians because they believe that it's only when they have received that what? That joy is full. But no, it's not so. Ask and receive is what makes joy full. Receive alone does not make joy full. Ask alone does not make joy full. Are you getting what I'm saying? The two have to go together. Praise God forevermore. First, it is not receiving that determines the fullness of joy, but asking and receiving that does what? Determines the fullness of joy. So if you have no joy, what act, why if we have no joy, why asking? We may not have any joy to receive, let alone fullness of joy after receiving. If we have no joy while we are asking, we may not have any joy to receive. Because you need joy to receive. Bible says with joy shall you what? Draw waters from what? The realm of salvation. You need joy to receive from God. We need joy to receive from God. We don't receive from God with murmuring. When the children of Israel are always murmuring when they ask, murmuring when they ask. God told me, see, this ten times. God does not counsel you. You see, when I saw that scripture, I don't know why it talked to my brain. I don't know why I've not been able to forget it. And I don't know where the exact that, but I know it is this. God told me this ten times, this ten times, have the, the children of Israel murmured against me. That's telling you the gravity and the weight that murmuring has. God does not come sin. He told Moses, he told children, he said they are sin, and told Isaiah that they are sin and their knowledge that remember no more. He told them, he will not remember. Yes. But why will God count murmuring? Because when murmuring steps, steps in, sorrow steps in. Joy is checked out. And you will be unable to receive when you get into that situation. So some Christians, they are wondering why they are not, they are not receiving. The reason why they are not receiving is not because God has not delivered. The reason why they are not receiving is because they have, been, they have checked out joy from their life. As they used to say that time, um, some slang they used to use in my country, they say, no joy, no joy, no joy. Ah, uh, ah, this man, this man does not have, this man don't get joy at all, no joy. No, it should not be your situation. You know, are you getting what I'm saying? It should not be your situation. Not be say, Hannah, the Bible said, why she why she 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 asked the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. And as the prophet spoke to her, she washed herself and she went. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Some of us, we have been asking, asking, we will never say anything to get joy. Because number one, we came with sorrow. We refuse to leave the sorrow. And when you don't even receive, when you refuse to leave the sorrow, you will never see a word that will give you joy. Because one of the ways God will give we, 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 we tell you prayer is answered is major way is that you see a word from scriptures. And you good to go. So when we see the word, we say, ah, is it what I'm looking for? I'm looking for manifestation. Man, Lord, give me man. <laughs> you know, some of us don't know that's our attitude. Is it what I'm looking for? I don't waste my time with what give me results. And at the end of the day, God says, Okay, is it a result you want? Let's wait till you see the result or not. If it doesn't have, if there's no joy in action, you will not even get joy to receive, let alone joy after reception. And that's the reason why some people, even when they have received, you see that they are not happy. They are not joyful. You get what I'm saying? They are not joyful after they receive because there was no joy when they were acting. There was no joy to receive. God in his infinite best, he said, if I don't give this, if I don't just allow this to happen somehow, somehow for this guy, he will die. So God allows it to happen and then, but they are not so joyful. Are we together? 
Amen to Jesus. Amen. So if we have no joy while acting, we may not have joy to receive, let alone fullness of joy after what? Receiving. John 16 verse 24. He that too have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. I'm going to be looking at Jesus told them. He said, you don't need to ask of me again. He said, you should ask the Father in my name. I'm going to be looking at that. We trust God for the opportunity to look at that. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, so what we receive is the will of God for us and what he knows we need at that moment. More often, our sensual and human nature does not like the will of God. Are we together? This is so because the flesh is at war with the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we have to be joyful before we come out. Because we always receive his will. And our sensual nature and our human nature always fights the will of God. So that's the reason why some people even receive and they are not joyful because why? They were acting on a total sensual note. And a carnal note. So they don't even know when God has answered. Are you getting what I'm saying? Galatians 5 verse 17 says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do things that you would. So we need to understand that there is a war. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's why we need to be totally spiritual when dealing with prayers. That's why we must pray with our what? Secret man, our secret place, and the what? Secret place of what? The most high. If not, we would take prayers as a sensual and carnal things and we will not be able to act with joy and what receive with joy and attain what fullness of joy let's open our feet and let's bless the Lord. for your love gift of any amount to grace life kami podcast Kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-154-551-2013. Swift code M B G H G H A C to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. Or, send us an email via ministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, Make me your own, until eternity be my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.